Hey everybody, this is Steph Mischuk with KillerPHP.com and KillerSites.com. In this video blog, I want to talk about web design and web programming degrees. I get this question very often and the question is, uh, do you need a web design degree or a web uh, programming degree to get work in the field? And the short answer is no. In fact, it's uh, one of the fields where degrees in the field are very unimportant most of the time. See, it depends on where you want to find work and actually, believe it or not, it can largely be affected by which programming language you're going to get involved with. Yes. If you're going to get into .NET or you're going to get into Java, then the chances that you may need a comp computer science degree or a computer engineering degree or something like that, or even a technical college degree will increase because with Java programming, .NET programming, that's largely uh, that kind of program. That kind of programming, programming is found in larger, medium to larger organizations. They tend to use those languages to build their stuff. Whereas if you were getting into PHP, then the, the need for a degree diminishes tremendously because uh, though PHP is used in very big websites, including Facebook and, and others, uh, you'll find that PHP is largely used in small uh, small for small companies, startups, small organizations, and there's plenty of work to be had working uh, for small companies uh, building their PHP-based web applications or web programs. So if you want to get into that, if you want to get into uh, building uh, sites and dynamic websites for smaller companies and entrepreneurs and so on, then degrees are next to useless, really. really. They'll never ask you what degree you have. What they're going to ask you is what have you done before? What can you do? Show me something. And that's about it. Uh, when I hire people, I never look at whether or not they have a degree or not. I'm just, I, I'm more concerned about their skill sets. You see, unlike so many other professions, uh, the web world and the all the web professions are more or less a meritocracy, meaning you advance and you get your jobs and your rewards based on merit, based on whether or not you have skills rather than a piece of paper from a college, university, or any other type of school. So I think that's a great thing. I think that uh, personally, on a philosophical basis, if everybody, uh, if the world operated that way in terms of skills rather than seniority, rather than connections, which is you know cronyism, uh, then you'd have a much more uh, productive uh, society. But again, I'm going on a tangent here. So fortunately, though the web though is you know based on that, it's it, because because results are immediate and obvious. I think that's the reason why. You see, if you build a piece of uh, web-based software, a PHP app that does an online shopping system, for instance, if you do a good job, it's pretty evident because everything will work. But if you do a crappy job, it's going to be pretty evident because things will not work. Whereas in other professions, um, and I'm not taking shots at other professions, but like, you know, counting, it, unless you're an accountant, it's probably not obvious whether or not your accountant is doing a good or bad job. It's really hard to tell. How about a lawyer? Same thing. How about, uh, you know, you get the idea. So it really, you know, in other professions, they rely more on seniority. They rely more on uh, credentials um, because the results are not necessarily obvious. And unfortunately, though, what also happens is cronyism uh, creeps in there and, and all kinds of minor corruptions, if you will, or systemic corruptions. Uh, we don't get that nearly as much in the web programming world, especially in the web design world. Again, because it's such a results-driven marketplace. So yeah, if you're going after small businesses, if you're uh, looking to set up your own private web uh, design studio or web programming studio, then uh, you don't have to worry about um, uh, degrees or anything like that. It's not important. 
And to close up this particular video blog, I just want to warn people about uh, taking on excessive student loan debt. And I'm going to warn you about I want to warn you about this because it's a major problem uh, in the U.S. Especially, uh, I can't say for Europe. Well, Europe is you know it's much cheaper to go to school there, uh, which makes sense, and Canada as well. And I don't know about the rest of the world, but w w with regards to everybody in the U.S., it's it's a very very dangerous thing to get student loan debt. You should be extremely careful about that because you have to understand. Uh, first of all, student loan debt cannot be discharged through bankruptcy. So what does that mean? That means if you rack up a bunch of student loan debt, you cannot get rid of it except by paying it off, right? And whereas if you started a business and the business has failed and the business owes hundreds of thousands of dollars or, or whatever, uh, you could just go bankrupt and, and, and wipe off the debt, you know? But for some reason, for students, They've uh, changed the laws in uh, recent years. Uh, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years ago, I forget now. And now if you, you know, rack up a whole bunch of student loan debt, you have to pay it off no matter what. So be very careful about going to school and racking up debt needlessly, especially if you're just exploring potential careers or paths and you're not sure what you want to study. You're better to do that on your own time and get a job and study on your own time uh, and buy a few books and so on, rather than uh, getting yourself into all kinds of trouble and all kinds of debt that will become a noose around your neck. Uh, well, not a noose, but uh, a heavy weight on you, if you will. Maybe a noose around your neck, you know. Uh, so, especially if you're getting into technology, especially if you're getting into the web stuff, uh, again, if you're not going for the big companies, you know, if you're not going to go into java.net, and you probably don't really need, you don't need a programming degree. You don't need a degree in that regard. And even if you're doing Java and .NET, even that, um, you know, it's, you know, the HR departments, the human resource departments will, will, will make it more difficult for you. But I've seen still today, even if you're very good at your, your pro, at your .NET or your Java, you will get a job. I, I can almost assure you of that. Uh, although I recommend PHP for the most part because if you look at uh, the trends going forward in North America and Europe and so on, you're going to see a resurgence in small business development. You're going to see lots of entre entrepreneurs, new entrepreneurs coming around simply because of the economic circumstances. Remember, we're going through uh, you know, an economic change now with the collapse of this, the system collapsing, readjusting to a certain extent. But with every economic uh, uh, change like this, it shakes out a lot of loose debris and it, uh, it opens up a lot of opportunities. So take it as being a good thing. And it's especially good thing if you learn web programming and web design and you learn PHP and you learn JavaScript and you learn, J you learn jQuery, and you get the idea. That's it. I hope this video was useful and uh, we'll talk soon. Ciao.